Hi, face paint friends. Today we're going to learn about glitter. Glitter comes in different bottles. If you buy your glitter by the pound, it may actually come in a container or a bag. This is one pound of holographic white glitter. And sometimes you can buy them and they're already in a little bottle. This is a wide bottle. This is a tall cylinder bottle. And then there's this bottle. Your glitters can come already in poofer bottles. I like poofer bottles the best because when you lay them on their side and you give a squeeze, Sometimes the air will shoot the glitter out and it'll hit the hand. One thing you need to know about glitter is glitter will accent your art. Your glitter will also hide your mistakes. As long as shiny and sparkly, no one notices your mistakes. The only one who really will notice your mistakes is you, the artist, because you know what you were trying to go for. But let me assure you, your client will see what you've painted and they will love it because they're the public, not an artist. So I'm gonna teach you about glitters. Glitters, cosmetic glitters specifically, are made differently from craft glitter. I'm gonna put a little bit on my finger and you can, <laughs> and you can see it catch the light. You can rub it between your fingers and you feel that it's fine and it's smooth. Cosmetic grade glitter is what you need to use when you face paint. Cosmetic glitter is cut in such a way that it does not have sharp edges. Craft glitter, on the other hand, has sharp edges. If you put it on your fingers and run it between your fingers, you feel little pokes from that glitter. You never want to use craft glitter on the face because if that craft glitter gets in your eyes, it can do some damage. Craft glitter is fine enough that if it does accidentally get in the eye, your tears, the liquid of your eye will naturally push the glitter out to the corners and it won't harm your eye. So this is the type of glitter you need to make sure you get for face painting. There's all kinds of glitters. I use two different types. One type of glitter, the, the iridescent holographic glitter that I have, is sheer. It's a little see-through. If I apply this to my paint, the colors of my paint can be seen through the glitter layers. And so this accent it. On the other hand, I have green cosmetic glitter. This is thicker, this is opaque. You can see there on the camera that it covers up a lot of the area of my finger. Now I use this on my face paint very strategically. If I want this glitter on my painting, I can only put this on the part of the paint that's still wet that I want it to be stuck on. And I have to be okay with the color of my painting being covered up by it. There are times when I want to use a glitter like this, an opaque glitter that covers all, is when I'm doing stem leaves. Also yellow. I like to use a yellow that is more opaque and less sheer. This one is in between. You can see the yellow here. I don't know if the camera's going to focus too well. I have buttons on here. Well, anyways, I have some focus buttons. I'm not sure if it's going to focus well. Okay. So I have yellow, can be sh uh, sheer, but I also have gold. My gold is opaque. It's not sheer. My gold is full coverage. 
I like to use the gold in the center of flowers. I like to use the gold on the horns of unicorns. You should see more of the gold. So a lot of people, when they get their face paint glitters, most professional face paint glitters will be the sheer and see-through. The, gl the cosmetic glitters that are more full coverage are usually found in the section where they sell glitters for glitter tattoos because they need full coverage on the tattoos to cover up the adhesive and the skin. But I find use for both of them. Now I wanna show you how I transfer big glitter into a small bottle. I take a piece of paper, I fold it in half. And then I take one end, I put my finger inside and I bend it up and I flatten the edges. This creates a scoop and a trough. If I wanna control that trough, I could take a pair of scissors and I can cut that trough a little more narrow to go into the neck of my small bottle. So I'm gonna open up this small bottle. I wanna see if I can just down, I'm gonna adjust the camera a little lower. Adjusting low finding it here. Here we are, we've gone down a level. So you can see all of my tools. So I've taken the lid of my poofer bottle off. The poofer bottle has a really teeny tiny hole. Most poofer bottles will not come with the hole open. You actually need to take a pin. I'm reaching for my pin over here. So when you get your poofer bottle, you want to take your pin, go in from the inside and push out. Or you can go from the top and go in, but you only want a little hole. You really don't want to take scissors and snip because while that is good for getting paint out of your bottle, it's not good for getting craft uh, cosmetic glitter out of your bottle. So you wanna make sure that hole is small enough that it doesn't pour out, but big enough that if you squeeze the bottle, the air blows out, pulling glitter out with it. And I'm gonna take my little bottle, put the bottle down. I'm gonna open up my craft glitter. <laughs> Sorry, I keep calling it craft, bad me. Cosmetic grade glitter. Put your cosmetic grade glitter into this depression that I just made. The light's bright, so it's hard to see and it's pouring out when I tipped it. Glitter is so much fun, it will get everywhere. Okay, so you can see the clear glitter is in here. I have more than enough for this bottle. So you want to really gauge how much glitter you want in your bottle. You do not have to fill it up all the way. So you take the paper that you just creased. I'm using a index card. I put some scoops of glitter on. I put the sharp tip into the bottle. And then I just give a little shake, I shimmy, and it pours right into the bottle. When I think the bottle's full, I tip this up, give my bottle a shake, and now I have a whole bunch of glitter in my bottle. And I can put a little bit more. There's a good reason not to fill it up all the way to the top. You need air inside this bottle to pull the glitter out. So if there's not a lot of air, then not a lot of glitter is gonna blow out when you squeeze the bottle. Now we're gonna take the lid, close it, 
some of these bottles come with a little tiny red cap and you can reclose your bottle of glitter so it doesn't come out. Here is the little red cap and it clicks right on like that and that way no glitter falls out of your kit. I'm going to get a little height here again. If you do not put that cap on, you can turn your craft glitter upside down. I'm sorry. Silly me, not craft. Cosmetic grade glitter. See, I'm shaking it upside down and very little is coming out. They're so tiny. It, so usually when I'm putting my glitter away in my kit, I don't bother to recap because I really don't lose a lot of glitter. But if you have bought in some used glitter bottle or you're reusing paint bottles, this tall one, <laughs> I test it with my pin. My pin has resistance, so I know that this hole is not too big. But I did have a paint bottle and the it poured out. Now once in a while, your bottle might clog up. So it's a good idea to put a pin in and roll it around just to make sure that all your glitters are free flowing. You don't want to squeeze the air out of the bottle so fast that the glitter hits the poor kid like shrapnel. You also want to tell your, the child that you're painting uh, to maybe hold their breath. Hold your breath and close your eyes. I'm going to spray glitter on you. I once had a, told a kid to close their eyes. I was going to spray glitter on them. And they closed their eyes and took a deep breath right as I was puffing the glitter. And they breathed in the glitter. Not good. So now I tell kids, hold your breath. Or I tell them, don't breathe. And that's a little bit about different sizes of craft glitters and the bottles and how they come in bulk. Now I'm gathering up my supplies here. This is a Dairy Queen, that's a Dairy Queen spoon I have in this bottle. I find it nice and delicate for putting glitter away. Now I'm gonna talk about how to paint with glitter. Glitter will stick to oily skin. So if someone's been playing around all day if you spray glitter on their face, the glitter is going to stick. I have, this is a whole bunch of glitter here. I don't want to waste that, so I'm going to put it away in its big jar. Okay, so glitter will stick to anything that's greasy. So you may want to have a baby wipe and have them wipe their face before you paint. It's a good practice that way they you don't paint on dirty skin. The second thing that glitter will stick to is wet paint. So when paint is wet, the glitter will actually stick to the wet paint. I already have water here in my paint mixture. So I'm going to load up my paintbrush. I'm going to use a colored glitter to show off a little bit how it sticks. I'm going to do some teardrops since I need to do some teardrop practice. I do a few strokes and because it is wet, I'll spray just a little bit of the uh, opaque glitter on. And if I tap it away or blow it, that glitter is still there. I can take red. I am putting a little puff of red glitter in my teardrops. That also is a opaque glitter. Gives nice thick coverage. 
But once that paint dries, that glitter's not going to go anywhere. I'm tapping it off sideways. There it is again. If you put glitter everywhere, a design can be overwhelmed. So it's best to use your glitter strategically, only in certain places. I'm going to do a design that is very popular. I'm going to go for a wide brush. Sometimes if you don't have a wide brush, any big bush brush will work. I'm going to use this petal brush. It is in a triangle. Remember how we did double dip? You can do double dip and this will give you wide petals. You can pull out tip, lay it down. But what we're doing here is I'm going to make a unicorn. It's my most requested design. And I just realized you're upside down. Here we go. You are with me again. All right, when I make a unicorn, I think I use the eye for the unicorn. I think where I want the nose in relation to the eye. So I make the nose, I curve under the eye and that's the unicorn's cheek. I curve over the eye, and that's the unicorn's head. I usually go just up to the eyebrow. And then I lay down an ear and then I curve down for a neck. And then I can go down to up or up to down. In this case, I'm going to go up to down. There is my basic unicorn. I then take my yellow. I poof the yellow all down that horn. If I was in a hurry, I would then take my sponge. But I don't have my sponges on me. Oh, I do have one. I'm cleaning them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flat brush. I'm going to get my flat brush wet. I'm going to get one of my split cakes. Here's one from purple to pink. I want the darker colors to be on the bottom. So the pointed part of the brush is going to go on the top of the design. So I'm going to go back and forth like this. And then I just add the color. How do you want your mane to look? Do you want curl to go down to up, up to down? I like going up, down, up. A little flash of color there. And then you could just use this to trace the outline of the unicorn, just like this. And since it's two colors, I could go in different layers. I can do a up and down here. Because there's two colors on this brush, it actually creates a really cool two-tone when I do the mane, just like that. Now the horn is sparkling. I want the unicorn to sparkle. So I will then get my clear white glitter and I will just, not everywhere, just a little spaces around the unicorn, put the glitter. I'm just doing little, I'm just little, little puffs, just like that. Gets the glitter out. And then while that's drying, I can get my fan and I can fan that. I'm going to use a small brush. I'm going to load it up with some black. So I'm going to spray there, go back and forward. And now I'm going to accent my unicorn. Remember thin lines, thin, Lay in some thick to thin. Do some swirls. Swirling left, 
Swirling right, swirling left, swirl again right. Thin, thick, thin, trace around nice, thin and light to the nose where I go thick again and then thin. I always paint in lines of varying thicknesses. This will make your art interesting. I will now go around, do a little curly cue up here, pull it in, feather it in. Do some thin lines flowing out from the top there. I'm going to make a little nose, a little mouth. I could, if I was in a hurry, I could leave this horn as it is. But I'm going to add some detail. You can paint on top of glitter. That also looks nicer. If I had put the glitter on last, it would have covered up some of my black lines and wouldn't be as crisp. But because I put the glitter on first and let it dry with the paint, then I could paint over it easy. And this is a girl unicorn. The difference between girl and boy unicorns is eyelashes. The girl unicorn, you could trace the whole eye or you could just here at the corner, do three little flicks up and there's your unicorn. If you want to add fun, we could add some little black stars. We can even add black dots. If you're doing a boy design, doing black dots is really good. But also, let's see, I'm reaching over here. Let's do some white stars and dots. My spray bottle's trying to run out of water. All right, we got the water and the paint, pulling it back and forth. Rolling it so we maintain that nice tip. And now we're going to up, down, left, right. I'm going to put some little stars here in the main, followed by just a few dots to simulate sparkles. That little bit of white just breaks up. And here at the very tip of the horn, you could do a big star and you could do some white dots among these black dots. And there you go. We have a very pretty glittery unicorn. Of all the designs that I paint, this is the most requested item that I'm asked for. I do have boys that ask for unicorns. I usually like to do those in blue. The unicorn does not have to be white. It could be a light pink or a light blue. I've even done a green unicorn. So if you don't have glitters already, they can be pricey. They're usually $8 a bottle or more, sometimes 11. I recommend that you get clear iridescent glitter and yellow and blue. Blue you want to use for your mermaids. Yellow or gold for the horn. But clear iridescent glitter can go on top of any color. But I have purple glitter. If I really wanted to make this glitter all over, I have purple glitter to put in the purple mane. I have clear white glitter for the white unicorn have yellow and gold glitter for the horn and that way each element is not just all one uniform sparkle they all sparkle a different color and that looks stunning 
So have fun with your glitters. There's one more glitter I need to introduce you to. Festival glitter. This is a brand of glitter called American Pixie. American Pixie has a combination of large and small glitter suspended in a gel. Some people make their own glitters with craft gel. Because it's in a gel, it's not going to get easily in the eyes. But as it dries, you may not want it over the eye. It can flake down and into the eye. When I apply glitter, or the pixie glitter, also known as chunky glitter, to someone's face, you can use the back of your brush. You get a small amount of glitter on the back of your brush, and then you lay it down and you apply it on the face. Also, if I'm at a festival, I'm touching the brush handles a lot. I want to be more sanitary. So I have these um, makeup applicators. One end is tipped and one other end is flat and round. And they're made for putting on makeup and being able to dispose of them. So I usually get the flat end. I scoop up my gl glitter and then I glide it down where I want it to go. Remember those thin, thick lines we practiced? Well, the same thing goes with glitter. You want to start thin, spread it out thick, and let it come thin again. So it's like a crescent shape. Just playing a little bit around the eye looks really good. It will reactivate your paint if your paint is wet but if you just touch it lightly you can get the chunky glitter to stick to your design without disturbing the paint they do sell some festival glitter that is more friendly to face paint and it will not disturb your paint when you pull it across your paint that's more expensive. It comes in all kinds of different colors. There's also different shapes. Let's see, let's get a closer look so you can see what this red craft glitter is doing. Let's see, which button is the focus? It's supposed to have autofocus. I'm pointing out this red has a little gold star in it. It has octagonal pieces of glitter and it has fine powdery glitter. These American pixie glitters have glitters of different sizes and these different sizes add a lot of fun to your design. I'm going to get the green and gold out. The green and gold spreads out very nice. There's gold, there's green, there's stars, and there's that fine powder, all suspended in a clear gel. Your skin will absorb this gel, and this gel will stay on the skin nicely by itself for about three hours. It will start flaking off, especially if you start brushing it, brushing against your skin. But if you're just going to a party, it stays on just long enough for the party. And if you have adults, sometimes they don't want paint, but they might want a little bit of fun glitter. So you can put it around their eye, you could even go across the crown of their forehead. 
it's, it's just a lot of fun or just a little bit on the cheeks to accent the makeup they already have on. So those are the different glitters. You have your, you have your chunky glitters. You have your clear see-through glitters and you have your full cover glitters. And these are all cosmetic and you only want to use cosmetic on your face. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a lot of fun with your glitters and wow up your face paint with beautiful art.